Hi everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and today we're going to be going over uh, matrix multiplication in this episode of CUDA Crash Course. Now, matrix multiplication is really a, uh, a staple kind of program that we run in on GPUs uh, a lot of the time, uh, and it's because GPUs are really good at accelerating it, and matrix multiplication is a really common operation in a lot of machine learning workloads, which are very popular right now. So let's go ahead and get started. So to start out, we're going to first go over uh, matrix multiplication again, uh, just as a quick review. Then we're going to see uh, how we can translate this to GPU execution and how it's going to look when we map it to CUDA code. And then we'll look at some uh, basic performance optimizations or, or some things to keep in mind uh, before we proceed to actually going over the uh, our example code. So let's get started. So how does basic matrix multiplication work? Now, for every element of a matrix C that, we're, that is going to be a result, we'll take a row of matrix A and do a sum of products with matrix B. So what does that mean, sum of products? So we'll take A11 times B11 plus A12 times B21, and that will equal C11. So as you can see, we'll march along a single row of A and then a column of B to generate a single output uh, in the C result. And then we'll to, to kind of toggle up and down between these two elements. So C11 and C21, it will be between the first or the second row in A. And between uh, C11 and C12, that's going to be as toggling between the first uh, column of B and the second column of B, keeping A constant. So how is this going to look like on GPUs? So using the same kind of diagram, uh, our basic thought will be for every single output, uh, every element of our result matrix C, we will assign one single thread. So this single thread will traverse an, an entire row of A and an entire column of B in order to calculate that sum of products to get this a single element of C, um, like we say here. Uh, so in this case, we'll have a single thread. We'll go for this uh, this pair. Remember, so when we're talking about these threads, every thread will do a unique pair of rows and columns. So one thread will do this row and this column. The next row, uh, next row will say do, or the next thread will do say this row and the next column, and then another one will do uh, a different row and the first column again, and it will do this different row and the last column. And so that will give us all four results. Now, so how do we do 2D indexing? So uh, in our original thread blocks in our vector add examples that we talked about previously, uh, a vector is really just a big long line of elements. So doing a 1D thread block makes sense. The problem easily maps to that. Now that we have these uh, square matrices or matrices in general, these map a lot better to uh, uh, two-dimensional shapes. So things like squares or rectangles, usually squares just because it's uh, they're very easy to lay out. Um, so let's consider this case. So we'll start with uh, very tiny thread blocks, just for examples, uh, but this is completely extensible to larger sizes. So we'll have these tiny two by two thread blocks. Uh, the thread blocks will be denoted by uh, the outline and then also different colors. Uh, and we have these same variables available, but we have to remember that they can be in two dimensions. So we have block ID X, which gives us uh, which block number we are in the X and Y dimensions. And then we have thread ID X, which tells us which thread we are with uh, which thread we are within a thread block in the x and y dimensions. So, and then we have block dim, uh, which is a constant in both the x and in the y direction. They can be different in the x and y dimension, but this is just a you know number of threads per thread block type variable. So, um, this is going to be constant for every single thread block. So, let's start with a basic example of how of how we actually do these calculations. So let's take uh, 2, 2, for example. So this first blue thread. Now, our block ID X, let's see which block we need in the X direction. So if we consider 
this column block 0 in the x direction. This will be block 1 in the x direction. Now how do we get to this block, uh, this block down here? Well that will be also block id x dot y, so block id x dot y will also be 1. This will be block id x uh, dot y is equal to 0. This will be block id x dot y is equal to 1. So that means our block id x dot x and our block id x dot y will both be equal to 1 to get this pool of threads in the bottom right. Now how do we get the individual thread? So if we go through uh, and see which one it is, or, or see how we calculate that, that will be say 0, 1 in the uh, x direction and 0, 1 in the y direction. So in this case this thread will be 0, 0. So what's the key idea of doing this? So we can see that uh, we can calculate the row of a specific thread and the column of a specific thread using these basic formulas. So let's just run through this example. So block id x dot y times block dim dot y, uh, or so the row is equal to block id x dot y times block dim dot y plus thread id x dot y. So let's see if that holds true up here. So we want uh, this thread, remember? So block id x was one, thread id uh, block dim was going to be two. Remember, there's two threads per block. So that's going to be two. So it's be one times two plus uh, thread id x dot y. So remember, we said it was zero. So it'll be two plus zero. So two, so our row is two. Then we do the column calculations and it works out to be the same. So block id x dot x is going to be 1. Remember, we go over 1, so this will be this block id x dot x. Then block dim dot x. Uh, the block dimensions in the x direction are two threads, so it'll be 1 times 2 here, which is equal to 2. And then our thread, it will be this first thread over here in this column, so the thread id x dot x will be 0, so it'll be 2 plus 0 again, or two, so we get the result to two. Um, so we this is extensible to any size matrix, so uh, it's a very convenient way to do this mapping. So remember, we always need to figure out in our CUDA kernel, uh, because that code is executed by every single thread in the system, every single thread in the system has to know first who it is. So it has to do these uh, thread location calculations. So let's talk about some performance considerations so these include, uh, co these are uh, mainly coalescing writes. So we can see that um, memory, even if it looks like it's in a matrix, will actually be laid out uh, into a flat line in memory. Uh, that's what we call our address space. So if we look at something like this, so if we, the first load of something like thread zero, if it does A00, so this first element, and if we look at the, uh, the load from a different thread, say A10, uh, we see that there's this offset. So if every single thread is loading from a different one of these rows, we see that we get this staggered pattern. So we get these really wide axes, so the memory is actually getting loaded from all over the place. Now let's look at um, Let's look at different, uh, a, a different kind of access pattern. So if we're going across, so we look across here and we see if we do, if we access all of these elements in a single row at the same time, we see that they all get bunched together and they can be done in say, maybe a single memory access instead of four memory access, uh, accesses. So this goes into this idea of locality. So uh, all of those pieces of data are probably located together on the same block. So when we load in one, we get all of them. So we don't have to wait for four blocks. We just have to wait for one block. So let's see how this kind of uh, plays into matrix multiplication. So we know that we're going to be traversing a row and then we're going to be traversing a column. So let's think about every single access in there. So for say between the first iteration and the second iteration, so in the uh, first iteration, we'll be loading up all of the first elements of the rows and then all of the first elements of the columns. Now, 
all of the elements of the uh, uh, for the first iteration, all of the elements in the columns are all in one straight line uh, for all the different threads. So they'll all be coalesced, but all the rows are going to be on different columns, just like this. So they're going to be diverged axes. So we'll see how we can do some optimizations here and uh, do some pre-processing of the data later in order to uh, have both of these axes be coalesced, but we'll leave it alone for now. And there's also this idea of shared memory that we'll get into later, and that's this user-managed L1 cache that we can preload some of this data into so we don't have to go all the way to memory. All right, so what's next? So let's go th through some of the actual code. All right, so starting here, so we have a very simple initialization like we always do. So this time we're doing uh, 1024 by 1024 matrices. Remember, this is a GPU. We're doing big computations that we want to speed up, so it's going to be very large calculations. Uh, so we're going to allocate memory on our GPU. We're going to copy over our matrices after we initialize them. The, uh, in this case, we'll be using uh, size 16 by 16 blocks, so 256 threads per block, but in two dimensions, and then we'll be using uh, equisized uh, grids as well. So um, we'll divide the number of elements by 16, and then uh, we'll end up having 1024 by 1024 total threads. So that uh, it ends up being a very large number. So uh, 2 to the 20th. OK, so then we launch matrix multiply, copy back our result as per usual and then we verify our results. So let's actually look at two things. Let's look at the serial implementation. So the serial implementation is very simple. It's just a triply nested for loop. So we'll say, I want to go through all the rows. I want to go through all the columns. And then for every single, uh, and then I want to go over every single element in those rows and columns. And then we do this successive, um, sum of, so this will be the sum of these product terms. Now let's see how it translates to GPUs. Remember, so we've got two dimensions of threads now. So what we actually end up doing is getting rid of two for loops. So, uh, and how do we do that? We do that because we automatically get this simultaneous, uh, or we get this single instruction, uh, multiple threads type thing, uh, or type model where we have uh, our rows and columns kind of pre-calculated for us because we, uh, uh, we're assigning a thread to each one of those positions. So we're still doing the same, uh, we're still doing the same sum of product calculation, but the only difference is we only need to do it for, or we only need to really think about for a single thread because each thread We'll have a unique row in a unique column, so automatically we're going to get our entire result matrix C. And then, of course, at the very end, we write out our temp sum that we calculate across each iteration to this to its corresponding position in that matrix C. So we can go ahead and build this. So we'll rebuild. And this one takes a little bit longer to run because remember, we're doing this verification and doing this serially on the CPU takes a long time. The GPU uh, matrix multiply actually runs pretty quick. So we're mainly waiting on the CPU verification and we'll run. Now we're mainly doing the CPU as you can see the high memory usage. And we're done. So we didn't get uh, any assert, which means that our program didn't crash during the verification. So we did it correctly. All right, that's going to do it for today. As always, uh, we have a GitHub page with all of these code examples, uh, including uh, a contact link if you want any more information, it's, uh, Google Sheets for all the upcoming videos. And so if we go to what we did today, we did uh, matrix multiply.cu under the matrix multiply folder in the CUDA programming repository. And so feel free to take this down, play around with it, 
Next time, we're going to be getting into an optimized version of matrix multiplication. And then in another video, we'll do some uh, performance modeling. So how do we compare the performance of our naive implementation that we did today with a more rigorous uh, and well-developed uh, tiled version? Okay, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you had a nice day.